Good afternoon and welcome to the 55th annual Gerstecker Teacher Award Program. My name is Viola Collin and I'm the president of the Midland City Education Association representing teachers and special services staff for Midland, Midland Public Schools. I'm honored to co-sponsor this event with the Midland Public Schools Board of Education. This program is one of our highlights of our school year. A time to honor our retiring staff, recognize years of dutiful service to the students in our community, and to applaud four of our finest educators as winners of the Gerstecker Teacher Proficiency Award. It has been a difficult year for Midland Public Schools, and we had faced adversity in the past. Our resilience is amazing, but it doesn't surprise me. Our staff is always willing to do the hard work to make the education of our students their priority. It is a very painful process to close five of our neighborhood schools, but I have no doubt that our teachers, administrators, and support staff will be ready to welcome each other and our students to their new home away from home. There will be change, but the one constant is the dedication of our educators to provide an exemplary education to all of our students. Regardless of the geographical location or the, or the walls that surround us. This program has been another constant in our professional lives. One of the things we count on, one of the things that reminds us of the outstanding performance of our staff and students on a daily basis. The professionalism and dedication that are the hallmark of this award and of all of our staff are why we are here today. Shortly, you will hear some stories that are a perfect example of how outstanding educators continue to shine despite the challenging times we are facing. These teachers have done everything they can to weather this storm with grace, perseverance, and professionalism. As many people have heard me say on numerous occasions, this is a humbling role to represent such an incredible group of teachers and other professionals. We have been extremely blessed with an exemplary group of highly qualified educators in our district. Their generous hearts are always dedicated to the success of our students. Today, we will celebrate four of our finest Midland Public School teachers. The teachers being honored today do not represent what precious, re they do represent, I'm sorry, the precious resources that <laughs> they absolutely represent, the precious, <laughs> precious resource to educate, that teachers bring to the table. They value all of our students' gifts, and this is the only way that all of our lives will improve for the better and ensure our noble profession called teaching will be carried on for generations to come. It goes without saying that without our teachers, none of us would be here today. And yet, it is important to acknowledge it out loud because teachers create the future. And each of you sitting here today proves it. So at this very moment in time, stay present. Enjoy yourself. If you are fortunate enough to be chosen as a winner of the Gerstecker Award this afternoon, revel in the knowledge that the spotlight of excellence has been cast upon you. Appreciate your accomplishments. Appreciate this recognition. But most, most of all, appreciate how the legacy of service will live on in all of the children you have taught. Speaking of legacy and service, as we celebrate the 55th anniversary of this event, I ask you to take a moment to consider the list of names in your program. As we also honor these previous Gerstack winners today. 
On the list are some of the finest people to ever grace this community with their passion for teaching. I know the qualities they must possess after reading many of the applications for this honor. Exemplary leaders, tireless workers, thinkers and lovers of learning. I wish to thank the Gerstecker family for their ongoing support of the schools and many other projects in this community. During the first portion of this program this afternoon, we honor years of service to public education. These years may be at Midland Public Schools and other districts in our state or around the nation. These years may be as a teacher, a counselor, a therapist, or an administrator. Each of the individuals I'm about to acknowledge will receive a certificate and a pin from the Midland City Education Association indicating their years of service. This recognition will take place at many of the end of the year luncheons and programs at individual buildings. I would like to ask each of these individuals to stand as I recognize them. Please hold your applause until all groups are standing. If you are celebrating your 25th year of service in Midland Public Schools, would you please stand? If you are celebrating 30 years, would you please stand? If you are celebrating 35 years in public education, please stand. If you are celebrating 40 years, we have anybody this year? <laughs> please stand. Thank you and congratulations. That is wonderful service and it is very much appreciated. And now for the retiree section of our program, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Midland Public Schools Superintendent, Mr. Carl Ellinger. Uh, thank you and thank you all for attending this very special um, event. We would be remiss if we didn't start out by properly recognizing and thanking uh, members of the Gerstacker family and their foundation. Lisa Gerstacker is here from Colorado. Would you please stand? How about a round of applause? <laughs> the Honorable Bill Schutte was planned on being here and he called my office earlier this afternoon. He's in Detroit and he had a conflict that came up. He offers his apologies for not being here wants us to know that his heart uh, is with us because he values MPS so much. So how about a round of applause for Bill Shooter? <laughs> we might only imagine what he's doing in Detroit. I want to read, I'd also like to recognize our Board of Education. Um, they are all here this evening, beginning with our Board President, Lee Rausch. Would you stand? Our board vice president, Ken Malt. <laughs> Secretary, Jerry Wasserman. <laughs> Treasurer, Joe Tromka. <laughs> Trustees, Rick Ole. <laughs> Susie LaCrosse. <laughs> and Lynn Baker. What young Americans need to know, in October 2007, in a speech delivered by former Congressman Lee Hamilton, he talked about what young Americans need to know. The 21st century brings with it tough challenges. Terrorism, nuclear proliferation, declining energy resources, a changing economy, competition from China and India and elsewhere, global warming, immigration issues, new diseases, difficult medical and ethical questions. If our young people are going to be successful, he said, in confronting those challenges, we need, to we need to teach them how to get along together in an open and democratic society. 
And then he listed uh, six or eight items that he thinks we need to focus on as educators with young people. And instead of thinking about it just with the role modeling and the instructing we do with our students, I'd like you to think about it in the context of the 46 people we're about to recognize in their retirement and ask yourself if the admiration we have for them and the inspiration they offer the rest of us, we're going to continue to work. Embodies these six or eight points because I think we've learned these from, our, from the veterans in our field as well. Mutual respect so that the results of lasting consequence can be achieved. Tolerance so that differences are valued instead of feared. Deliberation and consultation so that open debate can lead us to consensus rather than conflict. Empathy so that we can put ourselves in the place of others. Civility so that we can disagree and still find common ground. Humility so that we can always keep in mind that we might be wrong about something. Honesty so that our common deliberations are open and straightforward and resolved so that the setbacks can be overcome and challenges surmounted. Clearly, we have challenges in the field of education, but if any district could overcome those and address those, especially with the tenants that I've just described to you, I believe Midland Public Schools can, even in the absence of 1,200 years of service to children in education, while these 46 people have worked for Midland Public Schools. That is an incredible amount of time of lost service time how about a round of applause for all 46 people? <laughs> Having said that, if our retirees are here and you could join me up on this stage, Christiana Charteau is going to help me and we will have all 46 of you up in front of the audience. There might even be a few people in the audience after we, after we have them up here. <laughs> Debbie Arthur is retiring as a first grade teacher from Carpenter Elementary. She has also taught at Mills Elementary. She has worked for Midland Public Schools for 21 years. Debbie, if you're here, would you join us? Vicki Benson is retiring as a physical therapist with special services. Years of service to MPS, 34 years. John Blahanka. John is retiring from the Administrative Center as the Director of Administrative Services and Special Services. John was also the principal at Carpenter Elementary School, assistant principal at Central Middle School, taught at Midland High School, Jefferson Middle School, and Leopard, and he'll be a huge loss to Midland Public Schools, as many of you recognize. Don Boyer. Don tells me that in retirement, he's just become too busy. That's why he has to retire. No longer has time to uh, teach. He's retiring from the administrative, I'm sorry, he's retiring as a technical education and business comp teacher from Jefferson Middle School. Martha Briggs. Oh, by the way, 34 years of service for Don. Martha is retiring as English teacher from H.H. H. Dow High School, 34 years of service to MPS. Marilyn Brooks. <laughs> Marilyn is retiring as the department chair for language arts, world and secondary language arts, and international baccalaureate program at Dow High School. Marilyn has also taught at Dow High School, 24 years of service to MPS. Susan Birch. <laughs> Susan is retiring as a third grade teacher from Carpenter Elementary School, years of service to MPS, 16 years. Connie Caldwell.
Connie is retiring as a special education teacher from Jefferson Middle School, eight years of service to MPS. Debbie Service. <laughs> Debbie is retiring as a first grade teacher from Chestnut Hill. Debbie has also taught at Chippewassee and Plymouth Elementary Schools, 32 years of service. Julianne DeRuiter. Julianne is retiring as a speech and language pathologist from Special Services, 11 years of service to Midland Public Schools. Cheryl Elsey. <laughs> Cheryl is retiring as a teacher consultant at Carpenter Elementary School. Cheryl has also taught at Chestnut Hill and Parkdale Elementary Schools, 30 years of service. Karen Fick. Karen is retiring as a math teacher from Midland High School. Wow, 35 years of service. Incredible. <laughs> Dr. Mike Frizee. Mike, there's only three lines in the paragraph, so I don't know if I'm going to cover everything that you've done for MPS. <laughs> Mike is retiring from Midland High School as the principal. Mike was also the principal at Seabird Elementary, assistant principal in special education at Ashman School, and a teacher consultant with special services, 41 years of service. <laughs> Mary Fullenweider. Mary is retiring as a third grade teacher from Cook Elementary. Mary has also taught at Woodcrest and Mills Elementary. Years of service to MPS, 13 years. <coughs> Patty Glove. <laughs> Patty is retiring as a third grade teacher from Chestnut Hill Elementary. Patty has also taught at Adams Elementary. 33 years of service. Ron Gorman. Ron is retiring as a special education and English teacher from Midland High School. Ron has also taught at Northeast and Central Middle School, 23 years of MPS service. Congratulations, Ron. Gail Grant. Gail is retiring as an English teacher from Dow High School. Gail has also taught at Central Middle School 13 years. Mary Ann Grant. Mary Ann is retiring as an Art and Humanities teacher from Dow High School. Mary Ann has also taught at Midland High 19 years of service. Mary Granda. Mary retires as a sixth grade teacher from Jefferson Middle School, also having taught at Parkdale Elementary School, 18 years of service. Larry Castle. <laughs> Larry is retiring as an English and physical education teacher from Midland High School. Larry is also taught at Jefferson and Northeast Middle School and Dow High School. 37 years of service to Midland Public Schools. Randy Kawakita. Rand Randy is retiring as a history teacher from Jefferson Middle School. Randy is also taught at Plymouth, 23 years of service. Lee Kosky. Lee is retiring as a science teacher from Dow High School, 31 years of service. <laughs> Judy Keel. <laughs> Judy, 
Judy is retiring as an English and speech teacher from Dow High School. Judy has also taught at Jefferson Middle School 35 years of service. <laughs> D Lane. D has <laughs> D has retired as the media specialist and teacher from Central and Jefferson Middle Schools. Again, 35 years of service as an educator. <laughs> Carol Laddie. <laughs> Carol's retiring as a physical education teacher from Dow High School in St. John's School. Carol has also taught at Parkdale Elementary, 22 years of MPS service. Vicki Litke. Vicki is retiring as a sixth grade teacher from Jefferson Middle School. She's also taught at East Lawn and Mapleton Elementary, 31 years of service to MPS. Yvonne Lynch. <laughs> Yvonne is retiring as a business education teacher and co-op coordinator for Midland High School. Yvonne is also taught at Jefferson and Northeast Middle School. 28 years of service to Midland Public Schools. <laughs> Nancy McElroy. <laughs> Nancy has retired as the guidance counselor and teacher from Midland High School. Nancy has also taught at Dow High School, 10 years of MPS service. Karen Milak. Karen is retiring as a kindergarten teacher from Cook Elementary. Karen has also taught at East Lawn Elementary, 21 years of service. Kathy Mitzel. <laughs> Kathy is retiring as a second grade teacher from Siebert Elementary. Kathy has also taught at Mapleton Elementary, 28 years of service to MPS. Becky Neer. <laughs> Rebecca is retiring as the department chair for counseling and media from Dow High School and Midland High. Becky has also taught and been a counselor at Central Middle School, 29 years of service, MPS. <laughs> Norm Neer. Norm is retiring as the coordinator of World Languages and IMTC. Norm has also been a department chair and teacher at Midland High School and a teacher at Northeast and Central Middle School, 35 years of service. <laughs> Susan Ortenberger. Susan has retired as a social worker from special services, 21 years of service. Judy Pollack. <laughs> Judy has retired as a teacher from Jefferson Middle School, 24 years of MPS service. Shelley Rappaport. <laughs> Shelley retires as a fifth grade teacher from Plymouth Elementary. She also taught at Chestnut Hill and Mills Elementary, 11 years of Midland Public School service. Patty Reese. <laughs> Patty is retiring as a sixth grade teacher from Central Middle School. Patty's also taught at East Lawn Elementary, 21 years of service to MPS. Vicki Richard. Vicki is retiring as a fifth grade teacher from Carpenter Elementary. She also taught at Mills Elementary, 16 years of MPS service. Charlotte Rudell. <laughs> Charlotte is retiring as an art teacher from Cook, Mills, and Plymouth Elementary schools. Charlotte has also taught at St. Bridget, Chestnut Hill, Longview, East Lawn, and Mapleton Elementary schools. 38 years of service to MPS. <laughs> 
Brenda Rush. Brenda retires as a sixth grade teacher from Jefferson Middle School. Brenda has also taught at East Lawn Middle School, 19 years MPS service. Ann Samaki. Ann is retiring as a kindergarten teacher from Seabird Elementary and has also taught at Mills Elementary School, 23 years of service. Steve Scott. Steve is retiring as a special education teacher from Jefferson Middle School. Steve has also taught at Cook Elementary School and with special services, 23 years of Midland Public School um, experience. Val Trabuki. It's amazing how many years service some of these staff members have. Val is retiring as a sixth grade teacher from Northeast Middle School. Val has also taught at Plymouth Elementary and Jefferson Middle School, 37 years of service. Janet Williams. <laughs> Janet is retiring as a math and theater teacher from Jefferson Middle School, 35 years of service. Brad Vandervliet. <laughs> Brad was probably wondering if I know my alphabet. Brad is retiring as principal from Seabird Elementary. Brad was also a principal at Parkdale Elementary and taught at Seabird Elementary, 30 years of, of service to MPS. <laughs> Jim Wilson. Jim is retiring as a school psychologist with special services. <laughs> 32 years of service to MPS. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, Sarah Yoder. Sarah is retiring as an English teacher from Midland High School. Sarah has also taught at Central Middle School, 33 years of service. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the class of 2010. <laughs> Folks, once again, that's 1,200 years of service as educators. Do they look like it or not? I might suggest to you that that is What do they care? They're retiring. I might suggest to you that's uh, 46 individuals and that's before the Senate passed the retirement incentive this afternoon <laughs> at about 2.15 or 3 o'clock. So uh, good luck to you all. It's my pleasure to reintroduce my colleague.
Now Carl started a ruckus by announcing that, but yes, it's true. <laughs> I said they would pass it the day after we staff, and um, so they did. So, the Gerstacker Awards are widely recognized in our community, the most prestigious honor given to professional educators. Our quality staff at Midland Public Schools only makes the selection and the recognition of these outstanding individuals more difficult. Before we bring the winners up, I'd like to thank several people who make this program possible today. First, my fellow Gerstacker Committee members, Ms. Lee Rouse, President of the Board of Education, Ms. Tracy Renfro, who is the Principal at Chestnut Hill Elementary, previous Gerstacker winner, Ms. Sarah Yoder, teacher at Midland High, and the person who makes so much of this happen, scheduling our meetings and planning the activities at this facility and doing a variety of other things. Ms. Kathy Hawkins Legault, teacher at Dow High. Thank you also to the Midland High School Chemic String Ensemble and to, the rec to their director, Ms. Kathy Peretz, to Ms. Marianne Grant at Dow High. She's the art teacher who created our beautiful cover of our program. Thank you to the American Output for the production of the program. And thank you to Christiana Charteau, the board secretary, and my assistant, Sharon Penfres, who both work very hard to ensure this program is successful. At this time, I turn the program over to fellow Gerstecker committee member, Mrs. Lee Rouse. Thank you. It seems like I always lose my voice in the spring, so I hope uh, I can get through it without uh, getting too quiet. You can't even begin to know what a pleasure and an honor it is to represent the Board of Education on this day of celebration and recognition. Um, it's particularly a treat for me, as most of the school-related meetings that I've been to this year have not been quite as joyful as this. So I appreciate very much this opportunity. Again, the Gerstacker Award was generously created to recognize and encourage superior teaching, to improve instruction, and to cultivate a continuance of excellent instruction in the Midland School System. I, for one, feel extremely fortunate as both a parent and a school board member to see examples of this excellence on a regular basis every day in every, in every one of our schools and programs. And surely everybody here in this room would agree that we can all recognize that that excellence wouldn't be possible without the incredible teaching staff that we have available in our school system today. So again, we thank the Gerstackers for allowing us the chance to celebrate such good fortune. A wise old soul once said that a child is not a vase to be filled but a fire to be lit. And so today I want to talk about fire starters. Now, little did I know that we would have a fire started today at Northeast, and no, I did not pay my eighth grader to start the fire or any of her friends. So what timing? I actually came up with this theme like a month ago, and I laughed when I heard this was happening. But in general, and Janet, we're with you wherever you are in the audience. We know what day it was like today. In general, we probably all think about putting out fires <laughs> more than we do starting them. And certainly the idea of starting a fire has a pretty negative connotation, which we have experienced today. Nobody wants to be known as an arsonist or in a more figurative way <laughs> as someone who creates issues or stirs up problems. But just for a few minutes today, I'd like you to think about this and change your paradigm about starting fires. Because today, we're here to recognize some special individuals who are all what I would term fire starters. Individuals who have truly fueled a passion for learning in relentless, creative, and amazing ways. So who or what is a fire starter? A fire starter is someone who knows how to ignite or start the flame. They know how to find the right kind of fuel, and they realize that one source of fuel doesn't work for all fires just like one instructional method doesn't work for all students. They recognize the difference in learning styles and they adjust accordingly. A fire starter is someone who can start a flame even without the typical ignition sources, like a match or a lighter. They're resourceful and they're creative in how they start that spark, whether it's by rubbing two sticks together or transferring and concentrating the energy from the sun through glass 
little did I know that you can start a fire with a can of Coke. And you can watch it on YouTube. <laughs> fire starters use whatever tools they can, they can find to help ignite that passion for learning. And they use their resources effectively, even when they're in short supply. A fire starter is also someone who's patient and above all, perseveres. Someone who recognizes that the conditions are not always best for making a fire. And I could not have asked for a better day to give a good, a good example of that today, like a rainy day or a gust of wind or even a missing match. But yet they persevere till that first spark is lit. Sometimes in the business of education, things are not perfect and we don't have a perfect day. Students come to school sick or tired, without their homework done, missing things. Maybe they're, they come without a necessity like a winter coat or a lunch or a snack. Sometimes you have parents calling because they're troubled and they keep on calling. Sometimes we find that resources are scarce and certainly there is often a high level of uncertainty. But fire starters recognize and acknowledge these challenges and they don't let them get in the way of what they do best, which is work with kids. Like children, fires need watching and tending, not only to keep them from going out, but to keep them from spreading in the wrong direction. Fire starters know how to control the flames, and they allow them to grow at the right rate. Like many of you here today, the fire starters we're rec recognizing today glow with the satisfaction of seeing students grow and master new skills, and they continually look to try to create new opportunities for them. If we look back in history, we know that fire and light have always been symbolic and sacred symbols for mankind. And in the home, often the hearth, where the fires are lit, become the centering, gathering spot. And it represents hospitality, warmth, and good cheer. The fire starters we're recognizing today are the center of the classroom, and they're recognized for their warmth, their caring, and their boundless energy while they work with students. So like a warm fire on a cold night, like today, students are drawn to them and seek their company and their wisdom. Many excellent candidates were nominated for the Gerstecker Awards this year, and many more of you out there are equally deserving. And what a great problem to have for the committee, although a challenging one. At a time when school systems are struggling all over the country, it's incredible that our community supports the level of excellence and the quality of education that we provide. Programs such as this award provided by the Gersteckers allow us to be able to really recognize what's good in the world. And that's even more important in times like today and this year in times of uncertainty. So to all of you out there that start fires every day, not kids at Northeast, and to the special four we're celebrating today, your flames are spreading. Don't let them go out. You spark the creativity in our kids. You may motivate all of us to action and you inspire greatness in all of those around you. You act as the fuel to the flame that burns deep within every one of our students as they grow and become successful adults. And so with that, I will leave you with one last quote from another wise soul. In everyone's life, at some time, our inner fire goes out. It's then burst into flame by an encounter with another human being. And we should all be thankful for those people who rekindle that spirit. So I, for one, want to thank all of you and want to be thankful for the fire starters that we're honoring here today. And I know that they're in good company as you all continue to spread the flame because it only takes one match to start the fire burning. Thank you. And now I would like to turn it over to Miss Marilyn Brooks for the fun part. Thank you, Mrs. Rouse. I think we have a firecracker from Dow High to acknowledge this afternoon ourselves. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, It is a and distinguished colleagues. It is a privilege to be standing here, ready to honor one of our outstanding Dow High School teachers. Now, you may be asking yourself, how does a lowly department head get the honor of speaking at such an auspicious occasion? Well, as is so often the case, there is a story. One day in April, I was standing in Principal Pam Castle's office, as I am wont to do, and all of a sudden, 
Her eyes lit up, and she called across the hall to our assistant principal, Brian Frankovich. Brian, come here. And Brian, a sprightly and dutiful man, <laughs> sprinted into Pam's office. Pam smiled enthusiastically and announced, we have a Gerstacker winner. And then she frowned. <laughs> but the district is sending me out of town to a conference that day, and I won't be able to be here. Who is going to give the speech to honor our recipient? She coyly raised an eyebrow. <laughs> I hesitated slightly, dodged quickly to the left, and made a break for the door. Nimble-footed, Brian lunged ahead of me and flung his arms across the door, blocking my exit. Foiled, I turned to Pam and Brian, and we explored our options. Rock, paper, scissors. Flip a coin. Draw straws. Ever creative, Principal Pam Castle decreed an arm wrestling match. <laughs> Brian rolled up his sleeve. I flexed my fingers and my flabby arms, and we sat down to the table. Now, some of you may find this hard to believe, but mild-mannered Brian has some mighty biceps. <laughs> and in a fraction of a second, he slammed my arm to the table and emerged triumphant smirking his way back to his office. And I trudged off to my keyboard to write a speech. <laughs> However, truth be told, I let him win. <laughs> I did. I could have taken him, but I let him win because I wanted to have the opportunity to express my respect and appreciation to our award winner. As one of the Dow High dinosaurs, I have known our teacher winner for a number of years, and I relish the chance to celebrate this fine educator's accomplishments. This year's winner brings an unbridled enthusiasm to the classroom and to the building. This teacher has the boundless energy that makes a battery-driven bunny look like a slug. <laughs> this teacher has an easy smile and an exuberant sense of humor. Our winner loves language and delights in learning the latest slang and hip expressions. This teacher is passionate about student learning and possesses an impressive toolkit of ways to engage students in classroom activities and apply the knowledge they've learned. This teacher works with all grade levels and all ability levels. However, when I think about this teacher, I think not only of a zeal for the profession, I also think qu'elle est si gentille. Je me souviens une fois quand mon mari était très, très malade et je ne pouvais pas travailler moi-même. Ce professeur, cet ami, a volontiers a enseigné ma classe de français avec toutes ses propres classes. Elle a un cœur très généreuse et je l'apprécie mille fois, toujours. Yo necesito añadir algo en su lengua favorita. Esta persona va a saber en un segundo que es la persona Cuando yo diga que hace 35 años, ella me dio mi trabajo en Midland High. <laughs> sí, esta profesora era la persona que hizo el camino para mí. And now if you're multilingual, you may already know who this recipient is. If not, keep listening. <laughs> if so, don't tell anybody yet. <laughs> Our winner attended Alpena Community College, where this person demonstrated enthusiasm as a cheerleader. That may give you a hint at the gender, maybe not. <laughs> and did you know that cheerleading could give you credit for required PE classes? <laughs> this person graduated from Western Michigan University with a 4.0 GPA. 
This person pursued additional studies at Central Michigan University, Northwood Institute, and the State University of New York. Our winner has been teaching world language in the Midland Public Schools since 1973, before I was born. <laughs> In her first evaluation, Midland High Assistant Principal Ron Fitch noted she arrives at 7 a.m. every morning in order to organize materials and mentally prepare herself for the day. She became the cheerleading sponsor so she could be something other than a teacher to the kids. She says it helps to understand them as people as well as students and she feels this job was a personal way of getting to know kids. Later that year, he noted, this teacher's rapid manner of speaking <laughs> sometimes sounds curt, and she should constantly be aware of this to reduce any negative reaction by students. I'm afraid we have a dead giveaway right now. <laughs> After a brief interruption to move to New York, and I just, oh no, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this thing here. For marital reasons, our teacher wisely returned to Midland a few years later, husband in tow, and children soon to appear. Okay, by <laughs> 1982, our teacher had set a goal to, show, to slow down when speaking. I was just trying to show that person that. <laughs> Elicit more individual responses and less group responses and utilize as much of the language lab program as possible. And Norm, you know, I think I've heard that when that teacher left Midland High in 1975, she recommended her replacement, and I believe he was wearing a green leisure suit and platform shoes. Very young, <laughs> very much a youngster, yes. Yes, <laughs> I heard that. By 1986, our young mother teacher was a sought after preschool guest lecturer. A letter from one Mary Kay Hawkins told Mr. Bob Markey, I am the three and four year old teacher at Trinity Lutheran Preschool and have had the pleasure of having child X in my class this year as well as last year. We are going to be doing a unit on Christmas in Mexico early in December and I was hoping we could borrow this teacher for about 35 minutes on Wednesday, December 3rd, 1986. It would be a treat for the children, children to learn a few words in Spanish and a special treat to have child X's mother. Our school day begins at 9.15 a.m. and we start with a special activity of the day. If this teacher could join us from shortly after 9.15 until 9.45, it would be just perfect. And this preschool visit must have been a big hit because by the summer of 1988, our winner was teaching a two-week camp for elementary students. In an article from the Midland Daily News dated June 23, 1988, they reported, when a group of elementary children crosses the threshold into room 215 at H.H. Dow High School, each day this week and next, something very unusual happens. John becomes Juan and Joe becomes Jose. Children greet each other with hola, and not a word of English is heard. Spanish music fills the room, which is decorated with Spanish and Mexican dolls, piñatas, and colorful Spanish banners. Midland, in effect, transforms itself into Mexico City or Madrid. The goal is to show that a foreign language program for elementary students is not only feasible, but highly desirable. The project is particularly significant since the committee appointed by the Midland Public Schools Board of Education has been charged with making a recommendation on whether such a program should be implemented in regular elementary classrooms. And we all know what the result of that was. By the way, in the accompanying photo, our candidate had fluffy 80s hair frothing out of a very stylish visor. Since 1988, our candidate has continued to be a committed teacher and an avid charger. She has sponsored Spanish Club, been a class sponsor, worked with our Students Against Drunk Driving group, traveled overseas with students, 
and always champions the annual magazine drive with a gusto that is hard to match. <laughs> Our winner is the teacher to beat when it comes to motivating students to sell magazines. She has costumes for every conceivable Spirit Week dress-up day. From tie-dye to toga, she's our gal. And if you ever doubted her charger spirit, then you must not have been in the hallways on the Friday mornings of Midland Dow Spirit Week when our candidate clad herself from head to toe in green and gold and ran through the building with Mary Street, thrusting a gold thunderbolt into the air and chanting, Go Chargers! Beat Midland. And you know, if I just use your thing here, I don't have to worry about that. Okay. As a teaching professional. High tech. <laughs> high tech. <laughs> she has taken on many challenges in the classroom, teaching French and Spanish at both the middle school and the high school level. She taught a sixth year AP Spanish class, the only year it was offered. She killed that course. No, no, that wasn't in here. That, that was not in here. She taught at seventh hour and filled the place and all the kids wanted to go. Students loved her and the class so much that they stayed for a seventh hour. Of course, there was some other added things that kept the kids coming. She set up a nice uh, current event event to go to Dow Diamond and meet with the good-looking Hispanic-speaking loons players <laughs> the first year they were here. And they talked Spanish, they talked English, and uh, the kids loved it and, and found out that doing something a little more than a textbook was what this lady was all about. Of course, creativity has often been a trademark of our teachers' classroom. She has collaborated with both the business department and the art department to integrate language into other disciplines. Ask her if you can see one of her gorgeous Mayan calendars, the product of a collaboration with the art department. These calendars are only a small portion of the colorful multicultural displays in her classroom. She even has taxidermied frogs on motorcycles driving across her desk. Our teacher also has quite the moves, teaching students the Macarena, the Tango, and salsa dancing. Her legacy lives on in Ren Fair, where salsation has become an annual feature of the talent show. And students remember our teacher long after they leave the classroom. Some have named her as a teacher who made a difference when they reached college. They remember her with great affection. One said, I was a student in her first Spanish class at Midland High School. This person wrote this from the nursing home. She <laughs> brought her enthusiasm and clear competency of the Spanish language to class every day. I still use today what I learned in her class many years ago. She made learning a foreign language fun. Another said, this teacher is a teacher I remember best after 20 years out of high school. She was remarkable in her support of students as human beings, treating us with respect and dignity. And still another said, when I think back on my time in the Midland Public Schools, the most memorable, impactful teacher I had was this teacher. Her enthusiasm for the subject and genuine caring for the students in her class was shown every day. She is a model for what all teachers should strive to be. And one remark, it has been many years since this candidate was my teacher in high school. However, every time I see her in town, it seems like yesterday as she remembers all her classes with great detail. She continually tried to keep up to speed on all her students. Very impressive. Another student said, in life, we all remember select moments. I have several moments that come back to me from my French class with this teacher who made learning French fun and different than any other class I had. It engaged the creative side of my brain, not just learning random facts and repeating dialogues. Her commitment to encouraging kids and being positive was influential in my success in school. She deserves my thanks and many accolades. And one said, from creative skits to eating French dishes, eclairs, we spoke and learned French at her insistence. 
She brought energy, enthusiasm, and creativity to our French classroom and captivated us all. Generations of students owe their knowledge of foreign language and culture to her. And parents echo the sentiments of their children. One said, my kids had her years ago. That's a recurring theme, I'm sorry. <laughs> and they still talk about how much fun they had in Spanish class. If I see her on the street, she will always remember my kids' names and ask about them. She's a great example of why teachers in the Midland Public Schools are the best. Others said, during the years our children had her as an educator, we saw the way she took an individual interest in her students and inspired them to become, to become fluent in another language. Two of our children have become fluent Spanish speakers due to her influence and inspiration. Another parent proudly reported, she had four of my children for Spanish and worked with them to fulfill their potential. My daughter Katie is now in a doctoral program at Notre Dame for Spanish and Spanish history. I believe a lot of this influence came from this teacher. Connie Blanchard is an exceptional educator whose zeal and passion for teaching is as strong now as it was when she began 37 years ago. She welcomes each new group of students with the same smile and the same assurance that they will learn a language and they will have fun while doing it. Students know that Madame Signora Blanchard has their best interests at heart and that she will work tirelessly to make them successful. Please join us in congratulating our Gerstecker Excellent in Teaching Award recipient, Connie Blanchard. I cannot believe, where is Tom? Where is he? I cannot believe that you can keep a secret, and I was here for Rick Chisney the whole time. <laughs> I am just floored. I didn't know that Norm had such a sense of humor that I could just, but it, I guess, oh, my husband, I'm going to tell him. This morning he looked at me, he said, remember I said my mother said you're wearing that? Now Charlie looked at me and goes, well, I guess that has a swimming effect. That's what he said. <laughs> this morning. Oh, guys, thank you so very much. Oh, oh, oh in fact, I want to take my picture. Oh, can't you guys hear me? Oh, come on. Jeez. Everybody, but I'm floored. I, I just don't know what to say, and some of that stuff I forgot that I wanted to ask who, did I really go to Trinity Lutheran and do something? <laughs> You're right, it's eons ago. I just had to, oh, because I'm just floored, and to see my own children, this is how they have to come visit mom, so this is very good. <laughs> Oh, this is so exciting. So do they come down? Do I introduce who everybody is? Or? Well, this is my daughter, Janelle Blanchard, coming in from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, to see her mom. And my son, and she's getting married this summer, so that we're planning that. This is my son, Chad, from Cleveland, Ohio. And he told me he's never getting married. I can give all the wedding money to her, is what he told me. And then all my friends, well, Stephanie and Roger Nelson, 
came in from Traverse City. Jackie and Dan Alderman are back there. John and Luana Russell. And who else did I miss somebody? Just, okay, I just, no, I said, and I said John and Luana Russell. And Sarah was so eloquent last year. You got up here and just spoke in whatever. I, I, I'm floored. I, <laughs> thank you. Just thank you so much. Next up is Janice Shaw. First, my thanks to Lisa Gerstacker and Bill Schutte, who are representing the sponsors of our ceremony today, the Gerstacker <laughs> Foundation. This ceremony gives Midland Public Schools a special venue to highlight staff members who served the district for many years and give them the special recognition they deserve. In addition, the Gerstacker Awards ceremony beckons us to step back from our fast-paced daily realities and take time to honor a few of our exemplary educators. Your support to this honored tradition is greatly appreciated. My thanks also to the many people who have given their time and talents to do the myriad of tasks required to bring to fruition this elaborate award ceremony. And finally, my thanks to the Selection Committee for sharing their time to read through the numerous nominations of the many outstanding staff members in our organization to bring forth the four educators we are honoring this afternoon. It is a privilege to introduce this Gerstacker winner, who is a member of the Special Services Ancillary Staff. I have worked with this person during my tenure with the Special Services Division spanning the last five years. The Special Services Division does not represent a single building. We, as we proved in our fast-paced move from our State Street offices this February into our new house, which is now in the Administration Center. But we are a group that service all buildings in the district and the six parochial schools located within our school district boundaries. Our speech therapists, occupational therapists, physical therapists, school social workers, teacher consultants, and school psychologists support students with disabilities and students at risk of not succeeding in the school environment. They accomplish this in a variety of ways, which include direct instruction, consultation to teachers, and support to families. And indeed, the Gerstacker honoree I speak of today served in several schools over the years in all of these capacities. As I highlight several key characteristics and qualities of this Gerstacker winner, I will borrow an innovative visual organization strategy used widely by our speech and language therapists. It's called EET, or the Expanding Expression Tool. Therapists use an EET model, and you may see this if you work in the different buildings, to help students structure and organize their ideas and information to support verbal and written communication. And it is through the categories of this Ichi model that I am going to unveil our Gerstacker winner. And you can see over here, I have a larger Ichi model, which you can follow along with as I go through the categories. <coughs> And it is designed to help the speaker or the student, or in my case, the speaker, explain a given concept or an award winner more completely. So we'll start with the green category. It asks, what group does this person belong to? Well, you already know. This staff member is in the Special Services Division. But I'll also share, this staff member has been an employee of the Midland Public Schools for over 20 years and has worked out of state as well. Brown. What are this person's characteristics? Fellow staff members use many adjectives to describe this honoree. Witty, inquisitive, determined yet unassuming, giving, creative, and fun are all adequate descriptors of this person. Eyes. What does this person look like? 
This Gerstacker winner is almost always smiling, has an ear for listening, and broad shoulders to help share the burdens of others. Well, I've tried to keep it broad so I wouldn't give away our honoree too early on. But it is the goal of the Ichi model to draw out more details on a given subject, so I must be more specific and share some more particulars about our award winner that illustrate her unique characteristics. Blue. Why is this person famous? What does this person do? This Gerstacker winner is a speech and language therapist. She has provided leadership with her peers in embracing technology and using the many unique advantages technology can offer to support her work with students. I remember in one of our first goal meetings, it was her goal to learn how to use PowerPoint more effectively. And she did not just put some slides together with verbiage to talk about our speech and language therapy to the kindergarten open house. She turned to a real expert, her son, to help her add in animation and some sounds to really bring that PowerPoint alive. Since that time, she has been, I would say, a queen with the board maker program. <laughs> She has used that to create visuals, to go online, to go up on the internet, and <coughs> use that in order to help students more fully see concepts, build vocabulary, and to help very challenged students more greatly assess the general education environment. One of the nomination letters explained how this therapist uses technology in the classroom to support the learning of several disabled students. The teacher from Central Middle School explained how this Gerstacker winner videotapes the students completing a science lab, sends it back to the classroom teacher who can then review it with the students, and sends a copy home so parents who with these students may never hear what happens in school have a visual and can share that experience with their own children. Yes, that video speaks a thousand words. Many other nom nominations talked about her creativeness, her ingenuity, and the large quantity of visuals this therapist has created for students. Her work is truly appreciated by staff and parents alike. This honoree is also famous among her peers for teaching them the strategy of visual phonics. With her background as a sign language interpreter, our honoree has used her specialized knowledge to teach her fellow speech therapists a strategy developed to teach the sound system of the English language to deaf students. This strategy employs the use of hand cues and written symbols to represent phonemes. Our honoree is also a gifted quilter. She has created one-of-a-kind masterpieces for her coworkers and friends who are celebrating milestones in their lives. Her quilts are adored and admired by the many recipients of her handiwork. Pink, what are the important events in this person's life? This Gerstacker winner earned her Bachelor of Arts degree from Gonzaga University in Spokane, Washington. She earned her master's degree with a major in speech pathology from Western Washington University. The first professional employment experience listed on her resume was as a therapist providing diagnosis and remediation of communication disorders for the Mark School District in Texas. She also worked in Idaho before moving to Michigan. In Michigan, she worked as a sign language interpreter before securing employment with Midland Public Schools as a speech and language therapist. Her husband explains how the tragic loss of her mother when she was a young girl allowed her to gain her ability to empathize with those who experience loss and sadness and instilled in her a soft spot in her heart for the child in need, the child in difficult circumstances, or the child facing a challenge. And indeed, those who work with this Gerstacker honoree appreciate her patience with students and with adults. The final category, orange. What else do I know? This Gerstacker winner's colleagues marvel at her creativity. For each of her students, she asks what subject they would like as a picture on their speech folder. 
And before long, each student's folder has a hand-drawn caricature of that requested subject matter. Her adventuresome nature has taken her to Germany as an exchange student, and she even entered a log rolling contest in her home state of Washington as a young girl. She grew up on a farm in Washington State, and her husband attributes her strong work ethic and love of nature to her early upbringing in the Pacific Northwest. However, despite her encouragement to her students to practice their speech sounds, apparently she wasn't so diligent practicing her own violin lessons. In fact, her violin teacher, Mr. Tall, is known to have scolded her. Don't waste my time and your parents' money not practicing. Let me teach your sister. Sit down. <laughs> well, it's a good thing she didn't take up the Mr. Tall method of student motivation for her public school teaching toolkit. Another important dimension of this Gerstacker winner is her accomplishments as a gardener. She loves to spend time outdoors planting and pruning. In fact, the gardens, her gardens, at, the gardens at her home will be showcased in the Garden Walk this year. Those of you who know this Gerstacker winner know the importance of her family. In her life, her son, Zachary, graduated from U of M in May. He will be continuing his education in medical school. Michael will graduate from Dow High in June, and her loving husband, Lance, has shared many of the details I have used to describe her in this speech. Over the years, this honoree has worked at Dow High School, Midland Christian. She currently provides therapy to Cook Elementary School, Central Middle School, and St. Bridget's Catholic School. I am deeply honored to present to all of you our 2010 Gerstacker winner from Special Services, Joanne Tiffany. I think a surefire way to make a speech therapist speechless is to <laughs> have them come to the Gerstacker. <laughs> um, you can get a speech therapist to stutter or, you know, <laughs> come elective mute, whatever. Um, we don't really like big groups. That's why we choose our job. <laughs> we like to speak small groups, you know, individual. <laughs> We're, we get pretty nervous in large group situations. Ask any of us. We never like to speak at the board meetings. <laughs> Nothing against you, but um, it just makes us pretty nervous. Um, but um, I'm just overwhelmed, and I am so truly honored and appreciative of everyone in, in, in this room. And to use Lee's example of the fire starters, the lights of my life, well, to start with my family, Mike and my son Zach and my husband Lance and um, welcome to New Light here, Mr. Cole. Um, and of course, the people I work with. Um, if you are a speech therapist, current or retired, please stand. I would like to give you a round of applause. <laughs> I 
I'm really not alone up here. If, if you're honoring me, you're truly honoring people from my department because I couldn't do what I do without them. On a daily basis, we email each other, we call, we do everything to help each other. If I need a friend to talk to about a student or someone to help with a microphone, I'd call one of them. They're, they're always there for me. And if you have a student in your classroom or someone you've received help with, it's because of them that you get the service you do. And Midland Public Schools is truly blessed to have a special services department that it does. It's not just the speech therapists, it's the occupational therapists, the physical therapists, the psychologists, the social workers, everyone there, the teacher consultants. Even though we don't have our old building anymore, we're a team. And without that team, so many students wouldn't get the service that they deserve. So thank you so much and I'm so appreciative and so thankful and so humbled because any one of you could be up here right now, honestly. Thank you so much. And next we'll have Janet Greif take the stage to introduce our next winner. Good afternoon. I'm thrilled to be here today to honor the next Gerstacker winner. <coughs> Honorable, hardworking, witty, open-minded, creative, and innovative are words used to describe our recipient. This teacher is one of integrity and character who accepts all students and instills an interest and passion in them. A past student who nominated this individual said that this teacher was the most influential teacher in their K-12 education. This individual is an exemplary teacher who meets with students before and after school and has a room full at lunch. This person shares their time and talent not only with the school, but with the district and the community at large. Words alone cannot describe the impact this person has on both staff and students. So to help illustrate, I've constructed a puzzle. And I've recruited an assistant to help me piece it together. So please let me introduce to you Northeast's own Vanna White. Come on down, Vanna. As today's guests introduce themselves and their roles, Vanna will reveal another piece of the puzzle <laughs> until our honoree is revealed. Let's practice, Vanna, are you ready? Our winner is the co-chair of our school improvement team. Okay, very good, okay, we're on a roll here, okay. This person is not just a person of great character, but also plays many characters. Having said that, when the news broke of this domination, supporters from around the world <laughs> offered to come to be part of the celebration. I'm going to ask them to join me now on stage, all of our guests. We have many guests from around the world. If you could come down, please.
Okay, before this individual started a career for the Midland Public Schools, he was employed at Central Michigan University in the Graphics Arts Department. He is credited for creating the Flying C, which you can see on the helmets. Yo, where are you? I can't. Would you introduce yourself, sir? I'm not familiar with you. I am Garrett, Sven's brother. Your Sven's brother? Sven's okay. brother, yes. And you're. Oh, <laughs> 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 Sven's brother, 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 Every Wednesday, then, supplies the Northeast crew with valuable information about common ground. He is a true Viking. Applause. <laughs> 
left, those are all the roles so far that a recipient plays. Actually, the role that he excels at the greatest and that he's most proud of is the role of father and husband. So I'd like to invite his wife and children, Brooke, Shelley, and Levi, to come down and join us on stage. role, the role that he's been playing the longest in his life, that role of a loving son. So I invite his parents to come on down. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Gladiel. His in-laws are also here, Mr. and Mrs. Rupel, if you'd like to join us down here. That's a bouquet. <laughs> um, geez, you know, I'm sitting here next to Robin, sure that she's getting it, of course, which seems to be the trick. <laughs> That's my first advice. Don't play cards with Janet, because she shows you your ha her hand right away, and then when you're not looking, she changes cards. And she told me, she says, we're going to get Robin there, and you're going to help get her there. I'm like, all right, I'm your, girl. I'm your guy. So. <laughs> all right. Um, and then, just five seconds ago, I'm like, geez, wouldn't you hate to be somebody that gets this and you got to give a speech after all that? <laughs> um, well, I'll go to this. Um, I'm sitting here with all these people that were retiring, and then Carl says, over 1,200 years of education, just with those people. And then you think about, geez, sorry. <laughs> you think about how many people each of those people touched. And you think, this is a this is important job we've got. And there's nothing, there's nothing more important. We're touching the future. And <laughs> thanks. <laughs> that I started out doing graphic design and I thought, okay, this is art and this is what I wanted to do, this is what I was trained to do and, and I, I enjoyed it, it was a fun job. But I found myself sitting in that office, this is after they had offered me a full-time position uh, as graphic designer and, and I was sitting in that office and I thought, you know, this is good, I like this, but you know, 30 years from now or whatever, I'm gonna be able to look back and see all these pictures that I drew or these brochures that I made or whatever and is that gonna be a career that I can be proud of? I was in, I taught for a day, an hour, and you already know you've got something that's gonna last. So, thank you very much. <laughs> Now I'd like to um, invite Greg Matheson to the podium. Uh, 
Uh, Janet and the Northeast staff, great job, but I really wish I wasn't following you. So. <laughs> Uh, welcome members of the Gerstacker family, MPS staff, and family members. As most of you know, I have the pleasure of supporting two schools, East Lawn Elementary, home of the Eagles. Do we have any Eagles here? And Longview Elementary, home of the Lions. Do we have any Lions here? <laughs> Due to tough economic times and a reduction in enrollment, Midland Public Schools is reducing the number of elementary schools by five. As a result, the bulk of our Longview student body will be joining East Lawn for next year. Upon this announcement, staff and parents have been busy collaborating to assure that this transition is as seamless as possible. With the two buildings consolidating and uniting as one, we are considering a mascot revision. <laughs> There's a little more to that. Uh, one of the options being considered is a griffin. For those of you who are not aware what a griffin is, it is a mythical hybrid of an eagle and a lion. This consideration has led to multiple discussions on if a griffin is an appropriate mascot for our students, staff, and parents. So as to provide an informed opinion, I've done some research on exactly what a griffin is. What it's, it, does it have the characteristics necessary to identify both school communities? While studying up on this, I was also in the process of compiling information for this presentation. This in turn led me to compare and contrast some of the characteristics of this noble beast with our Gerstacker recipient <laughs> and the comments shared by those who nominated her. For the sake of not identifying which building our recipient is from, I will be referring to the staff member as R. Griffin from here on out. Therefore, let's get started. Here are a few details about griffins you may not know. A griffin is thought to be an especially powerful and majestic creature combining intelligence and strength. Our griffin is thought to be talented, energetic, and a dedicated professional. Griffins have been described as a fabulous animal, symbolically significant for its domination of both the earth and sky. Our griffin is known for being an exemplary teacher who studies and applies best practice in all curricular areas. Griffins are a symbol of the sun, wisdom, strength, and salvation. Our griffin is a symbol of integrity, high professional standards, and is highly respected by building and district peers. A griffin is known to be arrogant and violent. <laughs> Our griffin is filled with confidence and spunk. <laughs> Griffins are known for guarding treasure and well-valued priceless possessions. Our griffin treats every student as though they are priceless and the most important student in the world. Griffins are frequently large, capable of carrying a man, ox, or elephant in its talons. Our griffin is rather petite capable of doing anything, including standing on her head to keep her students' attention to help them learn, according to one of her nomination letters. Throughout history, griffins have been used to denote strength and leadership. Our griffin is considered a building leader, playing major roles within our student support team, my blissy, and school improvement team. Because of its special powers, griffins have been associated with nobility and the well-to-do. Our griffin has been linked with me, <laughs> other staff, and a number of kids who adore her. The griffin is a mortal enemy of horses. Its magic talons have detected poison and its feathers have cured blindness. Our griffin is quite fond of horses. The magic eyes in the back of her head detect goofing around, and the special band-aids have cured various boo-boos and ouchies. If provoked, griffin are known to eat men. <laughs> if tempted, our griffin is known for eating Mexican food and finishing it off with a cherry cigar. A 
According to the famous explorer Marco Polo, griffins are from Madagascar. Our griffin is from Stanish, Michigan. Griffins typically have the head of an eagle, the body of a lion, and shaggy legs with clawed feet. <laughs> Our griffin would probably be described in the opposite manner, having the head of a lion with her extremely large mane of hair. <laughs> I cannot comment on how shaggy her legs are. <laughs> A griffin is not a creature you want to make mad. The same would be held true for our griffin. <laughs> and I think she's there already. She seems to get especially upset if you spell her last name with only one A. I found that out. After further research, I've discovered a little more background regarding our griffin, Kelly Kratz. Mrs. Kelly Kratz has been part of the MPS family for 14 years. She has spent her entire career at Longview with the bulk of those years in first grade. She received her associate's degree from Delta College, her Bachelor of Science in Education from Central Michigan University, and her Master of Arts degree from Saginaw Valley State University. Earlier this year, she was nominated and received the Office Max A Day Made Better Teaching Award, which included over $1,000 of donated school supplies. There was an endless supply of positive comments for those who nominated her. A fellow teacher shared the following. Kelly is an exemplary teacher who applies best practice in all curricular areas. The academic success of her students is testimony to the endless hours she puts in. She holds high expectations for every child in her class and is willing to put in the time and effort it takes to help each child master the first grade curriculum. Another colleague included the following. Kelly is simply an expert in the field of education. She is creative and aware of the diverse needs of all children and particularly gifted in meeting the needs of those who are at risk. A former parent shared her perspective from last year. Kelly is an excellent teacher. I saw that firsthand while volunteering in my classroom, in her classroom, excuse me. It was great watching her work with students at all levels, challenging students, motivating students, and encouraging students. She made learn, learning fun and interesting. Her former administrator provided the following. Kelly's hard work ethic, student achievement record, and dynamic teaching ability are some of the elements that make her an outstanding candidate. No matter what challenge Kelly is presented with, she rises to the opportunity. She has maintained quality, excellence, and professionalism in all of her teaching duties. Finally, another colleague included the following. Kelly exemplifies excellence in teaching and what it's all about. I believe any current and former students, staff, and administrators would wholeheartedly agree. As far as my research is concerned, my findings are inconclusive whether she has similar characteristics to those of a griffin or not. All I know is that she is one tenacious lion and a big part of why Longview is and always will be considered the little school that makes a big difference. Kelly, could you please join us at this time?
Well, Larry should be standing here giving a speech because I am um, pretty sure that all these Longview people were here for Larry just to support. Um, thank you, I, I don't know what to say. Um, I think Longview just is the model of a school that we all work together and I shouldn't be up here alone. And if it wasn't for Kathy Holtoff, 13 years of making me look good, I probably wouldn't be here. Um, I, I love everybody and I, I don't know what to say. Thank you, I'm just, I don't know what to say. I'm, um, my, I would like to introduce my family, but I'm sure you would like to leave before seven or eight. So um, I have nieces and nephews and my three children, my husband, um, my very best friends from high school are here. Um, my new family at East Lawn, they're here. <laughs> um, and I, I will say if I, they have to call me a griffin, I'll be called a griffin, but I'd rather. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to soar with the Eagles no matter what they call me. So thank you. I thank you to my family and friends for coming and I thank you. I don't know what to say. Thank you all very much for being here today to celebrate our winners and we invite you to join us immediately following our ceremony for a reception downstairs and I can't thank you enough for attending and celebrating this important evening. Have a good day.